you. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you, sir. Happen to need some Christmas cards, sir? Christmas cards? Yes, Christmas cards. <laughs> it's not too late. Still only Christmas Eve. <laughs> oh, God, thanks. Oh, maybe some last-minute shopping? Why fight the crowds? Make your selection here, peacefully, quietly. <laughs> Ties, wristwatches, bracelets. How about some nice rings for every occasion? <laughs> Tell me, is there anything you don't have? I even have something they don't have. Now, if you're interested in tickets for that show, they're almost impossible to get, except from me. I ordered mine last April. Afraid you're gonna have to find some other customer, pal. See ya. I hate to see a customer walk away empty-handed. <laughs> Sold out until June? You mean no tickets at all? I do believe St. Nicholas has sent me a Christmas pigeon. <laughs> I beg your pardon, young lady. <laughs> Too. I noticed you at the window with a kiss of Donna here. What's the matter? No tickets? The man even laughed at me when I told him what I wanted. He laughed? At a Yuletide request? Well, I don't blame him. I mean, they're sold out so far ahead. It was ridiculous of me to think I could get tickets for tonight's performance. But it was the only real inspiration I had as what to give Ruthie and Jerry for Christmas. I mean, Ruthie does want a garlic crusher. But that's something you give with something. You just don't give somebody a garlic crusher alone. It's incredible. What? It's such a coincidence, I find it hard to believe myself. Here you want tickets for tonight's show, and I just happen to have them here. Oh! <laughs> These are for me. Oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh, here we are. Two tickets on the aisle. Eighth row, $25 a piece. $25 a piece? But it says right there, $9.90 a piece. <gasps> You're a scalper. Shh. I want the whole world to know. I just think there's something immoral about scalping people at Christmas time. And right in front of him. Oh, Irving? <laughs> He's just filling in. His real specialty is bank robbing. <laughs> You're joking. Well, it's the season to be jolly. <laughs> How about the tickets? Well, $20 is as high as I can go. $20? That doesn't even cover my overhead. Well, maybe I can stretch it to 30. But you'll have to take a check for the rest of it. A check? You must be kidding, girlie. I'm a scalper, not a supermarket. I've got my driver's license for identification. And my check has got my name and phone number and address on it. Please. <laughs> OK. For you and the $20, I'll do it. Oh, thank you. Ruthie and Jerry are going to be so happy. You have no idea how much they want to see this show. Have you got a pen? I think so. I thought you said you weren't a supermarket. Uh, I hope your friends... What did you say their name was? Ruthie and Jerry Bauman. They live in apartment C right next to me. I live in apartment D. There you are. Now, wait a minute. Oh, I can't get that. Will you pull that off? Now, let's see here. Here's my driver's license. It's got my name and address, and there's my picture. And here's your $20 in cash. Okay. I hope Ruth and Jerry uh, appreciate the nice neighbor they got. Oh, thank you, Mr. Yeah. Uh... There are no names, please. <laughs> here's your tickets. Thank you. And have a merry. Thank you. You too. Merry Christmas. <laughs> We get one more Christmas card. I'm in big trouble. Merry Christmas. I'm in big trouble. It's a present for you and Jerry. Oh, thank you very much. I'm sure. That's your present over there. That great big one. 
The other great big one is for Don. Of course, it isn't the size of the present that counts. It's the size of the thought. Well, I can just squeeze this in at the bottom here. <laughs> Ruthie, your present isn't just the card. There's something in it. A magazine subscription? Open it and find out. <laughs> oh, but we never open our presents till Christmas morning. Well, this one you have to open. It won't be any good tomorrow morning. Tickets? Theater tickets? For a show? Not just any show. What show have you and Jerry been dying to see? And that's right! Now, get me one. Call Jerry and tell him you meet him downtown. Gee, I better get moving, too. Don't and I have to go to Brewster to be with my parents. Oh, Anne, now I don't know what to do about your presents. What do you mean? Well, the boxes are big enough, but I'm not so sure what's inside it compared to these tickets. Oh, Ruthie, whatever they are, Donald and I will love them. Oh, Merry Christmas, Anne. Thank you, Ruthie. Merry Christmas. I gotta get going. Don's picking me up at 8.30. Why so late? Oh, Mom and Dad are going out. They won't be home until after 11. They have to chop the tree. You mean trim the tree? Chop. Daddy really believes in an old-fashioned Christmas. Okay, now, that's everything, including our presents from Ruthie and Jerry. Did you give them yours? Yep, a salad bowl. What'd you get them? I got them something they wanted more than anything in the whole world, and you said I couldn't do it. You said those tickets were impossible to get. Honey, you got them? Yeah, I got them. And you should have seen Ruthie's face. You already gave them to her? Well, I had to. They were for tonight's performance. Otherwise, I'd have slipped them under the door, unsigned, and she would have had to guess who sent them. That's funny. Like the old theater ticket gambit. What old theater ticket gambit? Well, it's a routine that robbers use. You know, they send somebody theater tickets, then while the people are at the theater, they nicely move in and clean out the apartment. You're not serious. It's a tried and true routine, as traditional as a Christmas stocking. You mean to say they actually sent people tickets so they could rob them? Sure, and they're always hard to get tickets to hit shows so that the people can't resist. It's not a bad investment in return for jewelry, furs, art treasures, Christmas presents, you name it. Name it? I did it. <laughs> Donald, I set it up for crooks to steal everything Ruthie and Jerry own. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. How could you do that? I bought those tickets from a scalper. Well, so? He has no way of knowing what you were going to do with them. Yes, he does. You told him? <laughs> well, he has no way of knowing where you live or who the Baumans are or where they live. Yes, he does. <laughs> you told him that, too? Well, all the information is printed right there on my check. And I did mention that the Baumans live right next door in C. Honey, scalpers don't pay checks. Frankly, I don't think he was a legitimate scalper anyway. I think he just wanted the Baumans' address so we could wipe them out. Honey, look, you're jumping to all kinds of crazy conclusions. Oh, Donald, please, if anything ever happened to Ruthie's and Jerry's things, I'd never forgive myself. Come on. It's a good thing we have each other's keys. Donald, will you come on? <laughs> So far, nothing's missing. But, Donald, look, who knows what's in those packages? And aside from them, there's Ruthie's silver teaspoons that her mother gave her and Jerry's fraternity pin. His fraternity pin? Does it or does it not have a diamond in it? A chip. Chip or no chip? Still a genuine diamond. And I don't think our crooks are very high class. Oh, I see. You figure we have our own personal low-class crooks. Well, I figure they'll take whatever they can get. Well, honey, what do you propose we do? Put a padlock on the door? Donald, locks don't bother real crooks. Locks only keep honest people honest. <laughs> You're a veritable fountain of information. So were you. You know, I never heard of the old theater ticket gambit until you mentioned it. Yeah, I, I did have to open my big fat mouth, didn't I? So, we can't leave because the robbers might come, and we can't stay because Mother and Daddy are waiting for us. We can't get a hold of Jerry and Ruthie. I don't know how to find Mother and Dad. Obviously, there's only one thing to do. I'm afraid to ask. I'll take all of Jerry and Ruthie's Christmas presents and anything else that's worth stealing and put them in my apartment. That way, if anyone does break in, they won't find anything worth taking. Swell. Put everything in your apartment. Then, since the crooks have your address, too, if they don't find anything in the Bauman's apartment, they'll go look in yours. Of course they will. That means... We'll have to hide all of my Christmas presents and valuables, too. We better get moving. We want to get to Brewster in time. This is no way for a grown man to live. Too bad all this stuff wasn't insured. Then we could have left it all behind. Well, there. Is that okay now? 
Yeah, just like before, I can't see. Well, you always said you could find your way to my apartment blindfolded. Now's your chance to prove it. Precinct, Sergeant Fitzgerald. Robbery? Happening now? What's the address? How many of them are there? Well, there's a man. And a girl. But the girl seems to be the leader. She tells him what to take and what not to take, and he doesn't. <laughs> Would you please hurry? I need some help. Honey, I'm coming as fast. <laughs> yep, I found some more silver. I don't know if it's sterling or not, but it ought to be worth something. And where do you think their jewelry boxes were? Don't tell me. Uh, let me guess. <laughs> oh, you couldn't guess in a million years. Anyway, Donald, we haven't got time for games. We still have to get the hi-fi and the TV out of here. <laughs> Will you come on? Tell her to come out here. Uh, Anne, could you come out here a minute? Donald, I've got my hands full. Can't you come here? Uh, well, I would, but my hands are tied. <laughs> Where did you get them? Oh, honey, look again. They've got me. You mean they're not here to help? They're laboring under a terrible misapprehension. Oh, well, I'm sure it's all some sort of a ridiculous mistake. In any case, I'll vouch for him. You want to vouch for him? I most certainly do. Lady, you're not what we would call a good reference. <laughs> they think we're stealing this stuff. Somebody saw us somehow, and they reported us. Well, why didn't you explain, for heaven's sake? Well, they won't give me a chance. Well, you have to. We're only preventing a crime. We're not committing one. Fine. You just come along with us to the station and explain that to the sergeant. Well, that's such a waste of time. All we're doing is taking the things out of their apartment and putting them into mine, for safety reasons. Oh? Oh, all right. I'll buy that. Thank you. Now let's go and see if the sergeant will. <laughs> Silver was stashed in the oven, flatware in the broiler. Fur piece in the refrigerator. Other miscellaneous items, such as golf clubs and a tennis racket, were in the dumbwaiter. Camera, a cheap fraternity pin, and six imitations. Sterling silver spoons were in the water heater. Now, just a minute. I can't allow this to go on any longer. It is true that everything was hidden in my apartment. But that fraternity pin has got a real diamond chip in it. And if those spoons aren't sterling, well, then somebody cheated Ruthie's mother. And that's something you should investigate. <laughs> Look, honey, everything will be cleared up as soon as Ruth and Jerry get here. Donald, I'm just trying to explain to the sergeant that in just using simple logic with his officers, it went clear over there head. Well, they haven't been around as long as I have, or heard as many logical stories. Let's hear yours. Well, as I was trying to explain to your junior officers, 
as I said to them, I live right next door. All we were doing was taking the things out of her apartment and putting them into mine. Well, isn't that the whole point of robbery? <laughs> but I was taking those things from the Bauman's apartment so somebody else couldn't take them. Oh, well, I can certainly understand the logic in that. I can, too, now. First come, first serve. <laughs> I don't think they're taking me seriously. Well, I was hoping you'd notice. <laughs> Look, this whole thing can be cleared up. I can prove everything if you'll just send somebody for Ruthie and Jerry Bauman. I know just where they are. They're in the eighth row. Now, lady, you wouldn't want me to stop a performance and interrupt the victims, would you? They're not victims, and yes, I certainly would. Well, I'm sorry. We don't take anybody out of a theater unless it's a real emergency. This is close. What's my father going to say when he hears about this? He's waiting for us. You're allowed one phone call. Why don't you call him and find out? Uh, Aunt, Aunt, look, there must be something we can do without getting your father involved. Look, there are any number of people that'll vouch for us. My, my editor, my publisher. My neighbors. <laughs> They're not all victims. One phone call. But you can make as many phone calls as you want, right, Sergeant? So if you could place a call or two that could clear everything up, then we wouldn't have to call anybody. That's a good idea. Oh, please, won't you make the phone call, Sergeant? Well, we'll give you a list. Now, first is Mrs. Brentano. She's fifth floor G. She'll vouch for us. All right. Make up your list, but you'll have to wait in the tank while I make the calls. Yes, sir. <laughs> Goodbye, Donald. Now, don't worry, honey. If, if I get out first, I'll wait for you. Goodbye. Aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? Well, there's one thing for sure. It's not going to take you as long to get out as it's taking you to get in. I'm sorry, sir. Have a happy Fourth of July. Fourth of July? Well, it certainly isn't anything like a Merry Christmas. <laughs> TV. You've been robbed. Hey, you, you can't get away with this. I'll call a cop. I am a cop. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Detective Whittle, burglary division. Fingerprints my specialty. You mean somebody stole everything? That's against the law. Yeah. Uh, they've got the suspects uptown at the 89th precinct. They caught them already? If you want to give them a ring, they'll fill you in. Or you've got an important call from Brewster, New York. Must be Anne. Honey, first let's call up and find out about the robbery. Gee, everything we own that's worth more than two cents is gone. The detective said that it was important. Don't you think being robbed is important? We must answer the call from friends before we do anything about strangers. Been married long? Almost long enough. <laughs> I've got another apartment to check. Hello, Miss Marie. Uh, Jerry Barman. Let Don and Anne. Well, they're with you. I, they should be. They left hours ago. <laughs> Mr. Marie? No, I haven't seen him. Down here. Oh, he's looking for them. Well, I, I'm sure they're all right. They're just probably driving slow because of the, the weather. <laughs> yeah. Merry Christmas to you, too. Bye-bye, Miss Marie. Okay, let's get down the station. Honey, what precinct was it? The 59th. 59. You sure? Maybe it was the 95th. Our first robbery, you don't pay attention. I did, too. It was two numbers, and they added up to 14. Put behind bars before you know what's happening. Ow! 
Why did you just say you were a policeman instead of hitting me in the nose? Why didn't you ask me instead of hitting me with that flower pot? That I can explain. Yeah, well, you'll have plenty of time. <laughs> well, I made the calls. You want to hear a review? Yes. Your neighbor, Mrs. Brentano, doesn't know anything, doesn't want to know anything, and as long as it's connected with the police, she doesn't want to get involved. But she does want to wish everybody a buena natal. Yes, well. Your editor is out caroling, can't be reached, doesn't want to get involved in police matters. Marvelous. Your publisher doesn't want to get involved. He's leaving for Connecticut. Your agent doesn't want to get involved. He is also leaving for Connecticut. Do they know each other? Who knows? Who cares? Want to hear the rest of the list? I think we better call a lawyer. Yeah, the way our luck's running, we call a lawyer, he won't want to get involved. We'll wait for Jerry and Ruthie to get back. Well, you'll have to go back to the tank and wait with the rest of our Christmas guests. Yes, sir. Bye, Donald. Do you mind? We've already seen farewell to arms. Bart, Epi. See, the last of your plain clothes days. When I get through with you, you'll be back in uniform, pounding a beaten Canasi. <laughs> he jumped me in the apartment where the loot is stashed. He hit me on the head with a flower pot. He doesn't accept an apology very graciously. <laughs> What's your name? Marie. Blue Marie. You got a daughter named Anne? Yes. How do you know? Do you know where she is? I haven't seen anything as organized as this since Ma Barker. <laughs> Family gang, huh? What are you talking about? I run a legitimate business in Brewster. All crooks have a legitimate business on the side. In Brewster? We don't have any crooks in Brewster. In Brewster, we have some of the finest policemen that money can buy. Show him to his room. I'm <laughs> sorry you got involved in this. Been here sooner, only I forgot it was the 89th precinct. By her, 89 is 14. <laughs> I tell you, boy, you get yourself into a scrape, you really get yourself into a good one. A slight correction. I don't get myself into scrapes. I have help. Lots of help. <laughs> How could you think that Anne would steal anything from me? I didn't stop to think. You'll hear about this, Sergeant. False arrest is serious business. Oh, well. Maybe. Now, Daddy, don't get all I'm excited. I'm not excited. Really oh, nice. Hold it. All right. Hold it. I hereby extend the profound apologies of the police department. We were just trying to do our job. Now take your presence and get out of here. Okay, now you can and... go. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Same to you, Sarge. Oh, uh, Ruthie, I, I want to be sure that you have your jewelry. I'm so worried. And here's your mother's oh, teaspoons. Yes. Oh. Okay, Sergeant, I want to report a robbery. What's your name? Uh, John Smith. John Smith? Uh, the third. <laughs> Donald, that's my scalper. Okay. What was stolen? Everything. My apartment was entirely cleaned out. Where were you when the robbery was taking place? At the theater. Theater? Yeah. You see, I had this ticket I couldn't get rid uh, I, I couldn't give away, so I used it myself. And while I was there, my apartment was robbed. What about that? The old theater ticket gambit. A poor man. I bet he lost his supermarket. Oh, no, he couldn't have. He still got it on. Is that supposed to make sense? Only to me and my scalper. <laughs> Daddy. That's fair enough. I hope so. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, there's more. To Bart from Effie. <laughs> to Sergeant Fitzgerald from The Boys. <laughs> Donald, you know what we've done? When we picked up our presents, we picked up all the policemen's presents, too. That ought to cause a little excitement down at the 89th. I'd better call them. Uh, never mind, honey. I think they're on their way. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.